Hello everyone, I'm Natasha, and today I look like a clown. <laughs> it's coming up on Valentine's Day, and another year I am single. Yes, my short-lived six-month relationship happened after Valentine's Day, so technically I've never had a boyfriend on Valentine's Day, but that's okay, I have romance books. This is not just like a, a YA trashy romance novel, no. I read legit romances. Now, I've only read a few Harlequin novels. They're not really my favorite. I like a bit more comedy in my books, and I'm not a big person when it comes to angst. I don't love a lot of sad times, so Colleen Hoover is not in this list today. <laughs> so I have a dozen romance books on my list, and they range from steamy, to very steamy. If you're not the type of person who likes to read, I guess, a lot of sex in books, I'm gonna tell you how steamy it is and I'll let you know. Okay, let's jump into the first book. So this is Until the Last Star Fades by Jacqueline Middleton. I have been reading one of Jacqueline's books for the last three years. She's the author of London Belongs to Me and today Kirkwall Books is actually sponsoring this video. So thank you so much to them. Now that I've read three of Jacqueline's novels, she is not your typical romance novel. I feel like she's definitely a mix between YA and romance. There are still explicit scenes in here and we kind of get raunchy, but it's all about the main heroine finding herself and maybe along with that comes a relationship. Her books are massive, so if you love big like romance books, she's definitely one you should pick up. If you've read London Belongs to Me, it's about a girl from Florida who goes to London and doesn't really know what she's getting herself into and trying to find herself in a career in the London playwright scene. The second one is a sequel to that and kind of like the struggle goals of what it's like to be in a relationship when two people are very focused on their careers. So this one, we follow a college student and this one is definitely on the angsty side. So there are a couple tears shed in this book, but Jacqueline, I feel really loves the entertainment business because the main love interest in this book is an aspiring actor. Now I was very frustrated with this main character because she was just not putting herself first. She cared very much about the people around her, about the boyfriend that she had in her life, her mother who is battling cancer, but she never really took time for herself. That is until, you know, until, until, until. The love interest in this book is inspiring actor Ben, and both he and Riley, the heroine of the story, are keeping secrets from each other. So they're kind of just having like happy-go-lucky times together because they're facing so many worries and stressful things in their life that they just kind of want to have a good time when they are together and they form a friendship. If you love the trope friends to lovers, this is definitely a book you should be picking up. I think Jacqueline's characters are very well thought out. There's always a bit of drama and cattiness in her stories that make it just a little bit of extra fun. I will have this link down below with one that belongs to me if you guys want to pick yourself up a copy. I just got done reading Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This has been on my list to read for such a long time. I actually listened to it on audiobook, but this is a queer young adult coming of age story. And it doesn't really read like a young adult. It felt more of like an adult novel. I really loved this book. I loved it because there was the aspect of religion brought up. Because the book is set in Utah and it's talked widely about Mormonism. One of the characters who is gay is Mormon. It's a high stakes romance in the modern age. That's like the best way I could put it. There's so many things that are pulling them apart. You know, I think the best thing about this novel and why I really loved it is because it does not demonize either side of the relationship. Both sides are seen with a lot of grace and I just really appreciated that. Definitely one of my favorite reads so far in 2019. I've read like five books already this year. That's crazy. I'm not gonna say sorry for loving romance. It makes me read. That's amazing. After I broke up with my boyfriend last year, I could not watch a romantic comedy, could not read a romance book. I kind of lost those hopeless romantic feelings that I've always had. The hopeless romantic has definitely come back into my life, but I know I can't have those unrealistic expectations, especially when what I'm reading is fiction and you never know. Next, I read this earlier this year, was one of my favorite authors is Marina Zapata, Culty. This is her second highest rated novel after The Wall of Winnipeg, and this one is all about soccer. It kind of has a little bit of like hate to love. There's a ton of steam in this book, let me tell you. It's a romantic relationship between a soccer player on a female national league team with her coach, who's kind of like a superstar. So kind of think Beckham. 
she is definitely an author you should look out for if you love hate to love or just any type of bickering type of novels okay <laughs> my next romance book so um i love outlander okay just let's put that out there i love outlander i love the first book i love the second book and i love the third book every year when the show comes out i can never finish the season outlander takes so much out of me the things that these characters have to go through is insane this year though i read gems of autumn now i did not read it with my eyes i listened to it as an audiobook and it's a 52 hour audiobook it is way too long <laughs> So it took me three months to get through Johns of Autumn. Now, I did enjoy the book. It just took forever. I don't love it like I loved the first one. The main villain is dead. It's just really a family drama now, which is not my favorite thing. And we are made to follow new characters, which I love the new characters. But still, there was this just this thing that happened in the book that I did not love. There was rape involved. I just killed my spirit for Outlander. I still highly encourage people to read the first book. It lit my fire for adult fantasy romance. Oh, I actually have this book on hand. So this book is Unwritten Rules by Aliyah Greenwood. This is actually a young adult romance. This is along the lines of Paper Princess by Aaron Watt. So if you love that book, you're gonna love this. This is a Wattpad book. I think the whole story was already written because this is just the first one. The next one's coming out, I think, sometime this year. And I just, I devoured this one. The main love interest is a street fighter. So there's a lot of violence in this. So I would just be wary. This wouldn't happen in real life. Like this isn't like a real relationship. And that's what makes it so fun because there's a lot of violence, a lot of high stakes, kidnapping and all that like crazy stuff so if you're really into books like that definitely pick this up again this is a YA romance so I think anyone over the age of 13 can read it but again violence just not a lot of steamy times more of like steamy kisses which are written very very well yeah the main character uh Hayes Adams not a dude that you would want to be in a relationship with he's like one of those tough guys on the outside but like actually a softy on the inside I feel like this is more of a CW romance because the characters do not feel like they're in high school. <laughs> I picked up Muffin Top by Avery Flynn. This is a plus size romance story. This one is very steamy, but if you love that stuff, go ahead. I've never read a plus size love interest. I'm so looking forward to seeing a sexy plus size love interest in a film at some point, you know, if they ever do it. This book made me be like, I want to be her. She's like this go-getter, public relations, working 30 year old lady. And then the love interest is a big Irish looking fireman. <laughs> They describe him to be very muscly and sexy, which is nice. So there's an unfortunate incident at a bar where this guy is telling our main character what she should be eating. Our love interest comes in and kind of saves the day a little bit, even though she's already telling off the guy. There's many instances in this book where her insecurities are on the line, and I really appreciated that. Coming from like a plus size person, navigating the dating world when you're not a size four, size six is difficult so this gave me a lot of hope <laughs> however i did skip through kind of like the middle of the book there was just a lot of things that were unnecessary and i just kind of wanted to get to the end of the story and figure out if they got together but still fun lots of steam next i have my oxford year by julia wellam this is a debut novel i think julia's actually an actor yes she is an actor this has already been picked up by a studio and cast with wait for it, Sam Hewen and Melissa Benoist, who plays Supergirl. This is about an American student who goes to Oxford for like a year or two, and uh, she gets into a romantic relationship with one of her professors. However, this is angsty. You think it's gonna be like, they're just kind of using each other for sex, and then it turns out that it's not. It's an emotional roller coaster. So prepare yourself, did not know that going into the book, and then I was like suddenly crying. Super steamy extremely steamy but sad okay this book i love this book this is fight or flight by samantha young samantha young wrote on dublin street it was a fun book this one is like extreme hate to love which is my favorite all that mean banter this one though like got really mean like super heated i was feeling very bad for the character, especially in the beginning, he's a major asshole. This one is extremely steamy, wow. It's about two characters, 
both very good looking, both very white, and both very blonde. <laughs> I pictured Alexander Skarsgård as the main character because the first thing that they described the character was Scandinavian, but it turns out he's actually Scottish. Both of these characters are on a flight that gets canceled, and then on this journey home, they are trying to outwit each other, and they end up sitting together, and he just immediately hates her. But of course, there's tension. There's always tension. So there you go. Love this book. Super fun. Next, I think my f one of my favorite books this year of has to be is 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. If you read The Hating Game by her two years ago, this is her new one. I love this story. One, because I got to fan cast Henry Cavill in my head. I love Henry Cavill. I'm considering doing a whole video about Henry Cavill because I love him so much. I literally have made it my goal in 2019 to comment on every single one of his Instagrams. So this book is a friends to lovers romance. We follow main character and she's a twin. Her and her brother have had this lifelong best friend. They've taken him under their wing for all of their life and he's been a constant ornament in their life. But she's known that he's always been her brothers. There were feelings in the past that were shut down because of this twin relationship and they're fiercely loyal and really competitive. Flash forward to when they're almost 30. Their grandma just died and they need to redo the house to sell it. Their best friend comes because he's now a contractor to help rebuild the house but the brother has a full-time job and he's not talking to his sister right now. It's just her and their best friend together and things start. It's so funny. There are things that happen in this book. Oh my gosh, and there's so much sexual tension. It is hilarious. You need to read it. It's my favorite. I love it. Three more books to go. So I have the kiss question on this. I had it in my favorite books 2018. This is by Helen Huang. This is about a woman who has Asperger's who hires a male prostitute to teach her to have sex. Yep. The main character is actually Vietnamese. I said it wrong in my favorite books. It's extremely steamy. There are a lot of sex scenes in this. Okay, so so just be aware of that. I loved it. I'm so excited for her next book. Next is a YA romance book. It's Save the Date by Morgan Matson. I read this one this year. I recommend this book to anyone 13 years or older. This one isn't really about romance, but I really just wanted to stick an actual YA book in here. But there is romance in it. However, I didn't love this book because it made me crazy. It's all about a wedding. Everything goes wrong. It's horrible. If you're one of those type A people, you're gonna hate this book. But I suggest you read it. There's a lot of cute scenes and two conflicting romances. Last, I had to put this in here because if you didn't know I read fan fiction on the daily, I read fan fiction a lot. If I'm not reading a book or I'm not listening to a book, I am reading fan fiction. That is what fills up my time. I'm, I'm literally always reading. And a lot of it is because I'm reading fan fiction. I read a fan fiction about Raylo. <laughs> here they are. Raylo, yes, my new OTP. I only read fan fictions about my OTPs. I used to read fan fiction about Twilight, that's where I first started. Then I decided to go to Germione. There's so much out there of them. And then I started with Raylo. I actually started writing a Raylo fic, but I read a fanfic that I really loved. So if you're interested in it, I'll have it linked down below. It's called Interstellar Transmissions. It basically predicted The Last Jedi, but in a, a different sense. It's steamy. I love it. You have to be careful sometimes with Kylo type of characters. If you're not preparing yourself for like this evil bastard, basically, then you're not gonna love it. No, it's wrong to even enter in that type of relationship with somebody. But I think reading it and identifying that type of behavior is good. But uh, I love Raylo and I really like this book. It's extremely long. I I'm still reading it actually to this day. Check it out if you're interested. That is my steamy, sexy romance books for your Valentine's Day. I hope you all enjoyed. And please let me know if I've ever gotten one of you to read one of the books that I recommended. And if you have any books that you think I should read, let me know. There's so many good romance books out there. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Natasha and I'll see you all in the next video. Keep calm and fangirl on. Bye!